Hi, I'm Tony Preckwinkle, chair of the Cook County Democratic Party. I'd like to welcome you to The 80, our podcast about the party, its candidates, and its leaders. We're beginning the podcast by interviewing our elected Democratic committee people to discuss their backgrounds and thoughts about the history and future of the party. Today, I'd like to welcome Karen Yarborough, who is a past state representative, recorder of deeds in Cook County, and is now the clerk of the county. Clerk Yarborough. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Tony. How are you? I'm, I'm happy to be here and excited about uh, doing this podcast with you. Well, thank you. So you, Karen, okay. are the uh, committee person for Proviso Township, right? One of the 30 yes, townships yes. of the Democratic Party. Okay, so tell us about Proviso. That's right. Well, Proviso is made up of uh, 14 communities, and I've been living in the uh, Proviso area for over 30 years. So I, I know the communities pretty well. I do reside in the village of Maywood and have been there for over 30 years. All right. Now, you started out in the state legislature, as I recall. Is that right? And then recorded. I, I, I did. Okay. Tell us yeah. about your tenure there. Well, well, you know what? Um, let me start at the beginning. I mean, I want to go all the way back to Washington, D.C., but I will tell you that um, I was a, a, a community person. I, I owned a business in the village of Maywood. I was an independent insurance agent and a realtor. And um, I got my start in politics, actually, by working with uh, former state representative Ted Leverance. Now, he just passed away last year, and um, I worked in his campaign a number of years. I learned so much uh, from uh, working with him and uh, the other volunteers, and he um, he was a he was a character. But <laughs> I think to be in politics, you almost have to be a character. But anyway, I learned a lot from him, and I learned a lot from my my customers in real estate and insurance. They were concerned about what was going on in the community, and it piqued my interest. All right. So you started out as a business person, an independent entrepreneur. Yes. And then you moved to yes. the state legislature. OK. And what what are you proudest of? What yes. was uh, of your tenure in the state legislature? So I spent uh, 12 years there and I figure if, you know, any time over 10 years is a bonus. But uh, my plan was to to um, make an impact. You know, as a state representative, you certainly represent your district, but you represent the entire state. And so when you pass legislation, it's the entire state that you're looking at. Um, two of my proudest moments, um, and I had an, a number of others, was when we passed the bill to uh, regulate smoking in public places. Um, it was a monumental bill. Um, I, I, I worked very, very hard on it. And actually, after the city council passed their, um, their regulation on smoking in public places, um, they kicked it to the state and they asked me to be their leader. And so, you know, that's a proud moment. Um, it didn't have as much to do about um, smoking. I, I never was a smoker, but, you know, I know people have rights and I get it, but their rights shouldn't supersede other people's rights. And so that was a proud moment. But I think my proudest moment, probably was um, carrying the bill to abolish the death penalty. Um, that is not a bread and butter issue. People have some real um, feelings about, um, you know, killing people, because that's what you're talking about doing. And until I really uh, dove into the whole issue of capital punishment and saw who actually was on death row, uh, see how many mistakes our state has made and across the country, um, I signed on, but I had a great group of uh, advocates that work with me. We did get that asked. Um, and I got an invitation to come to Rome, and they actually lit up the Colosseum in Rome uh, to celebrate Il Illinois getting, you know, getting it right and being on the right side of history. I actually, in in that during that time, I I got an opportunity to meet meet the Pope, and of course, he was real thrilled that Illinois finally got it right. So those are two very very proud moments uh, in in my life and uh, in the legislature. And then I said, well, you know what, when when you pass stuff like that, why not move on and you know see what else we can get done in another area? Well, you know. Um Ending the death penalty was surely a momentous uh, a time in, in Illinois history. And 
you know, we had for a very long time had the reputation across the country as a place where there were an inordinate number of wrongful convictions, people who uh, had been sentenced to, to death and then it turns out they were innocent. Um, moving from the yeah. wrong, wrongful conviction capital of the country to one that was in the forefront of the battle to end uh, the death penalty was quite a, quite a turnaround. And I thank you for that good work. Yeah. Well, it was a bipartisan bill, too. That was important to me. This was not a Democratic uh, issue or a Republican issue. It was a human rights issue. And I actually got a chance to, to meet, uh, work with uh, former Governor Ryan, who actually lit the, the, the match. I mean, you know, because he actually was a governor that just, he just said, hey, you know, we're getting this wrong in Illinois. And so he actually put a moratorium on uh, for uh, capital punishment in the state. And then from there, we took it from there. And I've had opportunity to talk to him uh, over the years about why he decided to do what he did. But that also lit the match for abolishing capital punishment in the state of Illinois. He, um, it was an unexpected ally, a leader of the Republican Party and government yes. of the state yes. to take on this issue, yes. which is uh, so critical to poor people across the country and particularly in our state, but also in particular, poor black and brown people who disproportionately end up on death row wherever, wherever there is a death penalty. Absolutely. So and then, you know, um, once you, go ahead. Yeah, well, if I could say if you pass a bill in, 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 in Springfield and it becomes law, um, then you have to keep it there. And so over the years, I've been paying attention to the legislature. You know, every year a new crop of, of legislators come in. And, you know, the, right, right after we passed the bill into law, um, there was a, a former colleague of mine that decided, you know what, um, we need to repeal this law. And so you can imagine, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm gone. But I actually had uh, talked to a number of folks there to say, hey, look, don't allow this to happen. And at the time, uh, Speaker Madigan, uh, you know, I went to him and I told him, I said, Mike, you know how important this was for this state. And uh, I hope that you would protect this law. And so from that time to this, the law has been protected. And I'm hopeful that even though we get a new crop of legislators that, that weren't there at the time, that they understand the importance of Illinois in the middle of the United States being uh, a, a state that has gotten it right. Thank you. Thank you. We're all grateful for your good work in the state legislature, particularly on this issue. Um, you spent you. some time then as recorder of deeds and now you've moved on to clerk. So tell us, tell us about the new position. Well, the, you know, the new position is the old position reformed, I, I might say, right. because you know that um, we've just now uh, assumed the um, responsibilities of the recorder of deeds office, and now we're one. And so there's lots of moving parts over here in the clerk's office because we handle, um, you know, not only recordings, we handle vital records, we handle taxes, and the big one, elections. And so, you know, we're just we're not quite a month into this, uh, this consolidation of these two agencies. But, you know, I, I, while I didn't support this initially out of the gate, um, it, it's, it's, it's working. It's working. And we're going to save taxpayers across the county uh, a ton of money. I, I, I mean, you know, the, the new initiatives that we're bringing up, the uh, using technology to, to do business, um, I just believe that we are going to be on the cutting edge of, of, of government, e-government, actually using technology to do, to do business as we should. So there, we have many elected offices in Cook County, one of which was recorder of deeds, and the voters decided that the uh, role of the recorder could be assumed by the clerk, uh, who yes. is responsible for a variety of documents anyway, right? Uh, yes. Vital records and documents. And, and so... The, the clerk's office uh, has assumed the responsibility of the, of the areas that were previously under the recorder, and that's now your job. Yes, it is. It, it is. And, and we're trying to get our arms around it. Um, I, I've, I've been in the recorder deeds office. I was there for six years. 
And so I, I really got to uh, learn the inner workings of the Recorder Deeds Office. While many people thought that this was just a pretty much throwaway office, it's a very important office. And anybody who owns property in Cook County or across the United States or around the world, you want to know who owns what. And in other countries, they don't know who owns what. And so sometimes they pass, um, somebody might purchase property and they don't even own, they, the person that is receiving their money, they don't even own the property. We had a big uh, focus on property fraud uh, in the recorder of deeds office. And we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, even with the pandemic, we still want to continue to do the work that we were doing. Some real people got hurt uh, over the years by um, some of these culprits stealing their property on paper. Now that they, we call that paper terrorism, but we have a number of, of, of um, innovations uh, in place now that when this kind of thing happens that, um, and, and you know, of course, once again, poor people are affected greatly by this because the average person doesn't look at their deed to see what's on their chain of title. They just don't. So, you know, I, I'm excited. I'm really excited about what we're going to do in the future in, on, on the recording side. We've got some great plans um, in store for, for Cook County. Okay, good. We appreciate that. Now, you have been uh, the, the committee person for Proviso Township for some, some time. How long, Karen? My goodness, I think this is my third term. Okay. All right. Don't quote me on that. I don't keep up with that <laughs> stuff. But, That's all you know, right. I run, the people want me to represent them. And so I'm happy to do that. Um, I've got some great partnerships in Proviso Township. And uh, as you know, we're the second largest Democratic vote in Cook County, uh, even now. So, you know, we're c continuing to, um, you know, encourage people not just to register to vote, but really to get engaged and get involved. That it's the work is for all of us to do not just the person who was chosen to be the state representative, the, um, the uh, recorder deeds, the uh, township committee month, but this is a job that everyone must get engaged and involved in. Uh, the, the largest democratic vote historically has been Thornton Township, uh, but Proviso is second. Yes, we're second large. All right, that's yes. very yes. good. Very good. Yes. So we yes. now have a, a new president, uh, President Biden, of course, Vice President Harris. Um, as a leader in the Democratic Party, and you're an officer in the in the Central Committee, what do you hope for from the Biden administration? Well, Tony, when as I watched yesterday, um, I got I felt a sigh of relief. You know, when democracy is being challenged, um, that's when you really look up and say, "Oh my goodness, we can't allow this to happen." And day after day after day over the past four years, I've been on pins and needles with the, the different uh, initiatives that were coming out of the White House, um, the things that we hold sacred, and that's democracy. Um, so you can imagine that I am thrilled. Now, I know the new administration has a lot of work ahead of it, but just to know that um, Joe Biden, we know who he is, and... Um, uh, he knows who we are, too. I mean, he's a Democrat, and he, he, he knows his way around. This is not his first rodeo. I can't be more thrilled that Kamala Harris is now the vice president of the United States, and she's another one. I mean, she came up through the ranks. She knows, you know, what's important to America. And so I'm thrilled. I'm excited. Uh, not to mention that she's also my sorority sister That's and right. yours. Gonna, and so that's say. exceptionally proud of Kamala Harris. Right. To give our sorority, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha, its props, all three of us are members yes. of AKA. Very yes, good. we are. Yes, all right. Proud um, members. Proud members. Proud members, proud members. Uh, we're kind of coming to the end of our yes. time period here. Um, Karen, is there anything you want to say to our to our listeners and viewers in conclusion? Well, I, you know, we get the government we deserve. And so shame on people who sit at home and watch things happen. I've always been a person to um, you, you identify what a problem is. And I've always been a person to jump in and see what I could do. And, you know, I would just encourage people to be a part of your government. Um, you, it's not enough just to be registered to vote. 
Um, yeah, we'll give you another prop for, for voting. But get engaged, get involved. We need your help. We would ask that you find some space, some place uh, in your life to, to get engaged in your government because this government belongs to you. All right, that's a good way to, to end our session. Thank you very much, Clerk Karen Yarborough Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you.